This would be January 18 or 19? 19. 19th. Thursday. The title of this short meditation is They Are Waiting. I want to do a reading this evening as we retire out of the Book of Romans, one of the most important books in the Bible for the sons. Let's see here. All right. I'll start with just recalling an appearing of the Lord that came not too far back. And the sense of of um, imminence or uh, urgency or shift that uh, came with it. I was in a gathering of maybe 300, something around that. I seemed to be the last one to take a seat. And then we waited for the Lord to speak. We were in an open area, just chairs gathered in a um, oblong circle. And then the clouds began to roll in. And the Lord spoke. But the speaking was not an audible word of direction. But it was the sound of thunder. Thunder so deep that it resonated throughout your entire being. It just overwhelmed the body and you felt an impartation. And it wasn't so much that he was speaking specific guidelines as it was an impartation of urgency. And that really seems to underscore what we sense right now. We've touched upon it without really giving it that word, urgency. But there is very much a sense of urgency. I know we briefly touched upon the scripture that if the time was not cut short, no flesh would be saved alive. And like so many things in the Word, I think we're beginning to understand that the Word was never meant to be received on the level of the mind and interpreted on that level and really assume that anything would really happen out of that. The mind has such a huge filter on it by virtue of our paradigm that it's very hard to get really the essence of what is being spoken. Really, the mind probably serves as an unwitting tool of the Lord to light the fire beneath us. That we, we have a, a, a cursory understanding 
of what he's saying. But as we've said before, hearing is not a product of what you are able to uh, cognitively uh, process. Hearing is experiencing his word. The Webster Dictionary gets it wrong when they talk about hearing, although perhaps for the physical body, you know, hearing is the agency of, you know, how the auditory canal and the mind and all of, you know, all of that works. You know, it comes through the ears, the mind processes and so on and so forth. But hearing, as we have known, is nothing less than experiencing. If you experience Him, then you've heard And the hearing can go deeper and deeper as we are able to receive him more and more. Hearing really goes in conjunction with our ability to give ourselves to the Lord. And to the degree that we're not able to give ourselves wholly to him really dictates just on what level we're really able to hear. It's like I was reviewing something this evening on the love of God. And we, we can all say that we, we conceptually understand it and we've experienced it to some measure or degree. But I can tell you that we, and I, and I don't mean this in, a, in, in any derogatory way, the depth of the love of God surpasses all understanding. I mean, can you imagine living on this next level of change, living as we transition, where the Lord said you're barely going to be able to remember what it was like to have lived in the warfare and the battle and all of the oppression which has come with the, you know, the credentials of sonship. And that's why there are so few that really make it. So many just settle for some level of of, of of their interpretation of what it means to walk with God for them and so they're fine with it but it's always so far short of what God really has the love of Christ as we enter into this next shift will be a state of living for us. What does it mean to live in the presence of God? What does it mean to be God in the earth and in the heavens? God's not looking to just bless people, bless you and Go out there and save the universe or whatever. Be my emissary. No. He's looking to, as we've said before, this is nothing new. He's looking to fill the suns until there's nothing left but him. The you, the I, is gone. There's only Him. 
it sounds kind of odd perhaps, but I mean there's always going to be you and and, and your personality, I suppose, whatever. But it's really all about the deep possessing of the Father and of the Lord in His sons. That's always been the plan. You will be my people and I will be your God. And I will come and take up my abode in my holy temple. You are my holy temple. And I will take up my abode within you. And I will wipe away your tears. And you won't remember the former things. You won't remember. Because you will be living in the love of God. In an atmosphere that we really <laughs> have no idea what it, what it is. But that's but it it is an experience coming. It's 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 creeping its way in to our lives. Little breakthroughs here and there. It's coming. Not only the freedom, as I have talked before, of what the feeling is like once you've transitioned to the other side. The feeling of freedom is like a newborn calf skipping at the, from the stall. Can't explain it. It can't be explained. It can only be experienced. And that's when you hear it. And that's, in, that's what's in store. That's what's right here, right around the corner. I can tell you that. And the experience of that freedom is unfathomable. And I can only imagine the experience, the transformation of living in His presence day and night. Living in that atmosphere of His love. Does it mean... Well, <clears throat> tell you what it doesn't mean. The mind cannot conceive of what I'm even talking about. You know, people can get on a, you know, preach about the love of God and we have to be careful not to judge and we move with, you know, with love and so on and so forth. The best they can do is Get an anointed level of soul on that one. Because we're talking spirit. And the judgments coming to this age are an expression of God's love. <laughs> I don't know so much love for the demons and the, the, the demons of darkness. That's already been written. And the sons of God are being raised up to execute, as the psalmist said, to execute the judgments already written. Not to take the judgments written and saying, well, I'm going to be so careful not to judge you. The concern is not judging one another. The concern is executing the judgments upon the evil and the darkness that has existed for eons. Lord, we live that every day is an unfolding experience of you. Someone says, well, I walk with God. If you walk with God, then you know that 
you walk a life of experience. Every day is a new day as you experience him deeper and deeper by virtue of the fact that you're seeing. If someone says, I see, I see, and they're blind as a bat, well, I guess they don't see very well. Someone says, well, I walk with God. Well, let me see if your actions really say the same thing because words are cheap. It's the heart that walks with God. Don't tell me. Just show me. And and so that's... This is all nothing new. Just reviewing a few things. We love you, Lord, with all of our heart, mind, and soul. And we are a free will offering in the day of thy power. And this is the day of thy power. And we give ourselves. And every day we arise, Lord, we give ourselves more deeply because more of us has died out. And more of you has come forth. We are not the same people we were ten years ago, five years ago. How about two or three months ago? We're not the same people. And you've got to be careful not to think of yourself in that light as, well, you know, this is who I am. No, no. We constantly are breaking bonds and discovering who we are. Because we're discovering who He is within us. And it's like a light bulb going off, going, you know, being turned on in a dark place. All of a sudden, you see the Lord, not externally, but you see Him as he's coming forth within you. And that is a reality, not a a step of faith. The day star is arising. And we're so much further down the road and into this change than we have understood. But a lot comes with it. Because a lot is resting upon the sons of God. I can feel the weight of it. The more that we we open up, then you accept the mantle. Romans 8, we were going to do a reading on. Well, I'm not sure (laughs) how far we'll get into that. But I, I guess we'll we'll leave that for another time. I'll just read from verse eighteen. It says, "For I consider that the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared." with the glory that is soon to be revealed within us. Lord, we we can't even imagine the depth of what you're saying here. For the eagerly awaiting creation waits for the revealing or manifesting of the sons of God. For creation has been subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope that the creation itself also will be set free from its slavery to corruption into the freedom of the glory 
of the children of God. For we know that all of creation groans and suffers the pains of childbirth together until now. But not only that, also we ourselves, having the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for our adoption as sons to wit the redemption of our body. Nothing else will suffice. Nothing else will suffice but the changing of our body, the final seal of sonship, of which the freedom will emanate throughout creation, almost like a Paul Revere ride. The British are coming. (laughs) The sons have come. The sons have come. And the word radiates out through all of creation, throughout the universe, throughout the planets and dimensions of the Father's kingdom, far and wide. The word goes out. The sons have come. The sons have come. All that we've been waiting for. It's here. The freedom is here from futility. The day of our release has come. For the sons are here. And the word resonates throughout the heavens. And the evil trembles and runs to find a place to hide. For the mighty wrath of God has come with them. And in the love of God, the judgments that have been written are issued forth. The Ancient of Days sits upon his throne and judgment is passed in favor of the saints of the Most High and the sons possess the kingdom. The sons possess the kingdom. We'll end this evening meditation with that thought. This is the day of change. This is the day of the power of God being fulfilled in the people. Lord, we yearn and groan to fully wake up, to fully see and know, experience the reality of what you have become within us. Father, it's been a hidden thing to the whole world (laughs) and to us what you've been quietly doing within the suns all these years. How does Malachi go? And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. Lord, here we stand. Here we are. Martin Luther spoke the same word back in the days when he was at odds with the Catholic, demonic, satanic church. And his cry was, of course, the just shall live by faith, but also, here I stand. Here we stand, O Father. Here we stand. We reach up to embrace the change and transformation of sonship. 
and we keep reaching up. We acknowledge thy word. And as Mary prayed, so we pray. Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. Amen.